so many lives since I was a child, and I realized how many times I've died. Welcome to Game Ass. Thanks for joining me tonight on the show. It is 1 a.m. on Friday morning uh, here in Dallas, Texas. So thanks for listening to the show. If you're listening live or if you're listening in the archives, um, I appreciate it. So um, just FYI, you can always find more out about me at offlimitsshow.com uh, where you can subscribe to the show via iTunes or um, you can also listen on Spreaker.com to listen to all the shows. Some of the shows are listed on the website as well. And, of course, um, you can um, <clears throat> just listen live anytime that I'm doing the show, which is often early in the morning like this because I am a night owl by nature. So if you uh, aren't able to listen to the show 
um, when it's on live, then um, you can always listen in the archive. So thanks for listening. However you're listening, I appreciate it. So on tonight's uh, Gay Mass, we're talking about um, the gay voice um, and also several other things uh, on the plate. So um, the first thing you know I want to talk about is um, – uh, there's this the Walmart creeper, and it's this guy who was recently arrested in uh, Killeen, Texas, which is actually not you – know, it's like sort of near – or Kilgore. I can't remember if it's Kilgore or Killeen. I think it was Kilgore, Texas, which is sort of near Houston. It's an East Texas town. And um, <clears throat> for those of you who aren't from Texas, Texas is very large, so it's far away from here. But it's uh, – it's a big town. It's a small town in East Texas. And it's, um, this guy apparently has been doing this for a while and they're calling him the Walmart creeper because he actually goes into stalls. One of the guys are in the stall next to him and then puts his phone under the stall and takes pictures, snaps pictures of their dicks or, or whatever, I guess. Uh, and then I don't know, uses the material. <laughs> so that's what he's been doing. And he was caught recently, um, uh, at the Walmart where he works. He was a, an employee there. <clears throat> and, um, and actually he was arrested and actually fined for it and also fired, of course. So, um, I don't know why somebody would do that, but I guess, I mean, when you've got like all the ton of free porn you can get online, why would you need to do it yourself? It's not like we're living in 1990, whatever, uh, you know, so I don't understand why someone would go through the trouble of that. Maybe it's the thrill. I don't know. But for some reason, this guy felt the the need to do this. Obviously, he's got an issue or got issues. Um, anybody who would do that, it obviously does. But anyway, um, so that's something that's happened recently in gay news. Uh, something else I wanted to talk about was, uh, before I get to the main topic, was circumcision. Um there has been a recent study about circumcision um, that kind of explains why people or men were, uh, started getting circumcised initially. The real reasons we're circumcised or some of us are circumcised because um, in the 19th century, um, Kellogg, which he was like a Quaker or not a Quaker, he was some sort of weird uh, religion. Um, I think he was Quaker. No, that's a Quaker Oats guy. I can't remember. But anyway, um, he, the cornflakes guy, uh, he actually, um, th said that, that men in the 19th century should be circumcised to prevent masturbation. And because masturbation was deemed, you know, um, immoral and wrong and all that stuff, evil, gross, whatever. Um, so in order to make it less, um, pleasurable, um, people started to actually have the, the um, um, men circumcised. Now, obviously, in the Jewish faith, the Muslim faiths, um, there are the same type of uh, kind of um, ritual, but it's also for that reason as well, because they're very puritanical religions, um, and so a lot of also a lot of uh, highly Christian people are also circumcised for the same reason. But a lot of times, people think or say it's because men it's to stay to be cleaner or whatever and it also helps the risk of hiv transmission which is not true the truth is that uh circumcision can you know reduce possibly reduce the risk of transmitting hiv by a very very minute amount but um you can get a condom and do exactly the same thing and not be mutilated and i do look at circumcision as mutilation and it does reduce pleasure so all of you men out there gay men men whatever that are circumcised actually don't know what it what sex is supposed to feel like <laughs> you know what it feels like as a circumcised man but not as an uncircumcised man and um so being uncircumcised means you have more pleasure sexual pleasure and I've talked about this before in the past, and I th I honestly, this is just my own little theory, but I've noticed that men who are circumcised are far more aggressive generally than men who are not circumcised. And I've always pontificated or pos posited or whatever you want to say that the reason for that is, it seems, and this is just my own observation from men throughout my life, and I've seen many penises and circumcised and uncircumcised, both, and kind of I'm very much an observ observational person very observant and I'm very good at picking up on patterns. And so, especially in human behavior, it's just a natural inclination I've always had. And so I kind of put together in my mind how the men who are circumcised seem to be far more aggressive, aggressive and overly aggressive in general in their lives. 
And the men who are uncircumcised generally are far less aggressive and far more laid back and far more, and not always, of course, but I mean, just less like they have something to prove or something. Um, the circumcised guys do. And so I think maybe it's something to do with the fact, like, especially if they're circumcised as a baby, there's some sort of trauma. Um, because it is mutilation. I mean, God, if you want to call God or, or uh, nature or whatever made us, uh, the way we, he made us for a reason. There's a reason that there's foreskin and it's for pleasure. Um, and it's for protection of the head and the glands and all that kind of stuff. And so that's why it's there. So it's meant to be there. <clears throat> and it's only humans that we came in and started ripping it off of babies before they even had a chance at life. Um, but it's done all over the world in a lot of places, but it's becoming less and less prevalent and less and less, um, you know, common people are beginning to not circumcise their children, their boys. Um, it's really more in America, in the United States and, and, um, and in, um, countries like, um, 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 <laughs> uh, which I think of another country, primarily America, Israel, of course, for religious reasons. And, and the, of course, the, uh, Middle Eastern countries for religious reasons that do the circumcision thing um, generally on men. Whereas in Europe, Western Europe, generally like Spain, Portugal, Spain, France, England, um, Great Britain, whatever, Germany, especially all the Swedish countries, you know, like Sweden and uh, I mean the Swedish, the, the Nordic countries like Sweden and um, the Netherlands and um, um, Norway, et cetera, <clears throat> do not generally. And also, um, Russians generally don't circumcise and also Africans generally don't circumcise either the men. Uh, so it's generally in Canadians don't Mexicans generally don't. So it's really just a, a small percentage of society that does it. But there's, if you're in America, you think it's a majority of society because most, most American men are circumcised. Um, but I, I, I certainly am against it. I've always been against it. I am not, and I'm glad that I'm not. And so I know what sex is supposed to feel like, and, um, it feels amazing. And, um, I've been with guys in the past that weren't circumcised and I don't know if you know what docking is, but it's, you put your foreskin over the other guy's penis head or whatever. And I've only done it a few times, but some circumcised guys wanted me to do it. So they know what it felt like to be uncut. And they were like, Oh my God, Oh my God. You know? And there is a huge difference because I think when you're circumcised, you lose the sensation. Well, I don't think I know you lose the circum, you lose the sensation, um, or the sensitivity that you get, um, when you're not circumcised, which is the way it's supposed to be. So I'm definitely against it. I do consider it mutilation and I think it's sad, but it's the good reason that the, the point is of this article I was reading is that it was telling people exactly the real reasons why people are circumcised. It's not because of anything to do with being cleaner or anything else. It has to do with religion, just like most things It has to do with religion and, and puritanical belief systems and things like that to try to prevent people from enjoying sex. So if you decide to ever have children and, um, <laughs> if you have a boy, please don't circumcise him. Don't mutilate him. At the very least, allow the boy to make the decision as he gets older, if he wants to do it or not when he's a teenager or an adult, don't do it. Um, just because it's what your family did to you. I think it's wrong. And you know, why is it okay for, for men to be circumcised, but not women? When people talk about women being circumcised, it's like, oh my God, it's such a barbaric thing. Well, so is it for men too. It's not like it's painless. It's not. And even as a baby, they say, you know, some people will say, oh, the baby's foreskin is so pliable, et cetera. They can't feel it. That's not true. <laughs> That's why they're screaming during a breast or anything else. And during this the procedure, it hurts. And it, I honestly think scars the kid, the boy for life, um, in a sort of a, a trauma, um, stuck in their brain or their sub, their subconscious or their psyche, the rest of their lives that they've had before they even had a chance to live life more than a few days. So, um, I hope that you won't do that to your children. I certainly won't if I have uh, any ever. So, um, the next thing I want to talk about was what was also in the news. Oh, so there's a, a lot of news about straight guys and cuddling lately. And I found this very intriguing because it is true that I've met straight guys in the past and had friends or whatever that were straight, that really were straight, uh, that liked to cuddle with other guys. And I always found it to be weird because, or abnormal or just different because when I 
because to me, if you're a straight guy, you're not going to want to cuddle with a guy, but it's not a sexual thing always. It's not generally a sexual thing. It's just a cuddling thing. And for me personally, I have a diff, I have difficulty in distinguishing between the two. You know, if I'm going to, um, if I'm going to cuddle with someone, generally it's, it's, you know, not just cuddling, it's, it's somewhat sexual in some way or another. So I certainly don't find it to be, um, you know, non-sexual the way a lot of these people are saying it is. But apparently uh, there's a new study out that says uh, in the UK that nearly 90, nearly 93% of male athletes surveyed said they enjoyed cuddling and are spooning with male friends on a regular basis. <laughs> um, and better yet to understand why American guys don't cuddle more often of the 40 participants surveyed 39 also revealed that they've shared a bed with another man since starting college. So it's interesting to me. I don't know how I, I don't know. I mean, first of all, if I'm a gay guy and sharing a bed with a guy that I'm attracted to, I don't think I could just sit there and cuddle just like with a straight guy, you know, there with a, with a straight girl and you know he's attracted to her it's very unlikely they're just going to cuddle so um i guess for two straight guys though it would be like a gay guy and a, and a straight girl cuddling because it's not sexual at all it's just you know cuddling and just being close it's closeness so i guess that's really the point is that it's just the intimacy uh of cuddling and um not anything sexual for them i just find it to be I don't know. I have a hard time wrapping my mind around it. And the reason is, is because I've been programmed by society for the same reasons or in the same way that everybody else has been programmed. And that is that, you know, if you are straight, you don't do anything that is deemed to be gay or looks gay or is gayish or anything like that, especially if you're a gay guy. So, uh, and, and for some reason, you know, sexuality or sexual orientation has been linked in our minds and our psyches with, um, with masculinity or uh, femininity. So for some reason, and there's a complete difference between the two things. If you are a straight guy, your masculinity is separate from your sexual orientation. So as a straight male, you may be very hyper masculine and like, you know, Hey dude, and play sports and shit like that, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Um, or you may be a little effeminate and still be straight because it has nothing to do with your sexuality or sexual orientation or mannerisms or whatever necessarily. It has to do with your, um, environment growing up and how you relate to people or whatever and your, your personality. Um, and so, there's this link in our minds, you know, between sexuality and masculinity and, uh, our sexual orientation, whatever. And I don't think that that's right, but growing up in America as I have, and as most of you have, um, it is, it is programmed into us to think and feel as if being, um, straight means you have to act a certain way or being gay means you have to act a certain way. Um, and not all of us. I mean, I, you know, look, I have always, well, first of all, let me, let me get to the next, the main topic, which is, um, the gay voice. And there's, um, been a lot of talk about this lately. And, you know, there's been studies about this, about whether, um, there's a, a documentary coming out, um, that's trying to be, uh, that's going to come out, which includes Margaret Cho, Tim Gunn, Don Lemon, Dan Savage, and George Takai and to give their take on the subject of whether gay men sound gay or whatever. And one thing that Margaret Cho said about this was she said, society is just a series of our agreements that we've made with people. Why not just break the agreements and just be yourself? It's just so much easier. And this is why I love this woman. <laughs> she just said it so succinctly and so beautifully and eloquently. And it's true. And it's how I live my life. And I just do what I want because I don't give a shit what people think about me. But, you know, very few people have that courage to be that way and to live their lives that way. Or even the, some people don't have the, the luxury of being that way because if they have jobs, they have to, they feel that they have to um, be and look a certain way and act a certain way to, to keep, uh, or they have careers or, or family or whatever. But I don't think that, first of all, the, the truth is the choice is always yours and how you, what you do. You don't, you're never trapped by anything. If you're in the closet, it's by your own choice. Whether you want to deal with the consequences of coming out or not is another uh, question. But anyway, this documentary talks about um, the fact that the guy, the, um, the main, um, the, 
sorry, the um, producer or the filmmaker, his name's David Thorpe, uh, admits that he's always been self-conscious about sounding gay, but doesn't exactly know how to explain what, quote, sounding gay is. And, you know, there's a huge cross-section of people in the gay community, as I've discussed many times before, and sounding gay is something else that's been programmed into our way of thinking as well. If we you know, talk a certain way um, th that's deemed to be effeminate, that means you're sound and you're a man, that means you're sounding gay. If you um, use proper grammar, maybe even, even if you don't sound, you don't speak with a lisp or, you know, syllable S's, you know, like so or whatever, <laughs> even if you don't talk like that, then they're, and you just use proper grammar, it sometimes in certain circles can be seen or deemed as sounding gay, quote unquote gay. So, and not sometimes it's, it's the pitch of your voice. If you have a high voice, if you have a medium voice, you have a low voice or a deep voice or whatever, you know, if you're really like really low <laughs> or whatever you can, that's also somehow linked to people's, um, in people's psyches to your masculinity and, and, um, whether or not you're gay or not. And that's another issue is that, you know, as I said already, you shouldn't link your sexuality with, or your masculinity with your sexual orientation because they're not the same thing. So I think it's really um, ridiculous that people um, still do this because it's really honestly um, stupid. I mean, <laughs> um, and you know, for me personally, I've, I've been, you know, when I was younger, I was, people called me gay all the time because I was more, a little more, I, I wasn't effeminate, but I wasn't, masculine and I wasn't like a girl and I wasn't like a guy. I was just sort of like there, sort of like not anything. I mean, people couldn't really tell what I was without asking me or whatever, if I was gay or straight, generally speaking. But I, would, I did hang around girls a lot, of course, and I preferred girls company, generally the guys, except for sexual things, obviously. Um, and I, I preferred um, doing more, you know, I didn't like sports so much. I, I played them some and, you know, all these kinds of things. But my voice was... Um, it was high ish. It wasn't really like high, high, but I remember when I was like 11 years old, I was calling somebody on ordering something on the phone and, and the lady in the line said, so how she, she says, what's your name? And you know, what's your name, young lady or something like that. <laughs> and I said, I said, I'm a guy or whatever. And she said, Oh, we'll just give it time. It'll change. And it did in a year or so. But I, I just thought, you know, my point is, is that, um, you know, it was like sounding like that meant I was a, was a girl, even though it's just, I had a higher pitch voice when I was young. So, um, now as an adult, you know, of course I don't, it doesn't happen to me anymore, but when I speak in certain circles, if I am, for example, this is a good example. If you're, if you're around people who are like less educated than you, or like if I were like in East Texas or something around a lot of rednecks and people who were less educated than me and, and didn't really, um, feel comfortable around people like me who were a little more educated than they were, um, they would automatically make assumptions about me that I was haughty or a stuck up or something like that because of words I choose. And it's happened to me before. It's happened in, in several instances and, and, um, extended families and things like that. But I, if I would just use words, like I would normally use in everyday sentences because I went to school and I've gone to several colleges and I've actually got several degrees and I've also got a good vocabulary that, I just use them normally because I'm not trying to sound as if I'm haughty or above somebody. I'm just speaking like I normally would. So if I'm in that kind of a group of people where maybe they're East Texans or something and they feel less uh, confident about themselves or their own vocabulary or their own intelligence levels, because that's not something that they ever pursued really. If I'm speaking in a certain way and using haughty words or high, high end words in their minds, then that could be deemed as being gay. I was just saying if I were around people that didn't know I was gay. Um, and so they think that that's gay speak. You just talk like, oh, you're gay because you use like words like discombobulated or ambivalent or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, so I, I try to just be myself. I, remember I always am just myself wherever I go. And for me, I've always felt that that's their issue, not mine. It's their own inferiority complex. Um, but in terms of sounding gay and just because of the words you use, um, is ridiculous. I mean, there's no, there's no such, no such thing as sounding gay because you use certain vocabulary words. Hey, granddaddy, a L K. How are you? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm okay. I'm just getting over some allergies. Uh, so anyway, there are, um, thanks for coming by the way. 
so there are some people who feel that using certain vocabulary words make you, makes you sound gay. And of course, there are those gay guys who are stereotypically gay sounding, where they are like very, so, so let me tell you what's going on. Oh my God, it's so funny. You know, and they have the whole vocal fry thing. Vocal fry, by the way, is being like, oh my God, <laughs> that's called vocal fry. So like anyway, or whatever. It's generally more like valley girl, like or girls that do that. But there are some gay guys who are like that too. So if you get a really highly effeminate gay man um, that speaks a certain way, that's considered gay, the gay voice, <coughs> excuse me, or gay talk. And, um, so I guess in that sense of the word, if you want to be stereotypically stereotypical, stereotypical, that's gay voice. But, um, what really is a gay voice? It's really just, I think a particular type of gay man who speaks a certain way and that has been stereotyped to, uh, across people's minds to actually think or feel that way. And oh, Californian is not Californication dialect, says Granddaddy ALK. Well, I don't think it's really just that because California is more like, so I took the 401, I took this, I took the 101 to the 5 to Ventura Boulevard and went there. And so that's more like that. California is more like that, you know? So, oh my God, we went to the beach today. Uh, you know, that's more Californian. <laughs> Whereas vocal fry is like, oh my God, God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what am I going to do? I mean, it's just a little different. Uh, and then there's the gay thing, which is more, like I said, more like, so, so she's so sorry to be here. I don't know. I can't do it, but it's very, there's a subtle difference, I think. Um, hey, Danny, what's up? Uh, anyway, so to me, there's definitely a, a difference in the way things actually sound between someone who's gay or Californian or whatever. Um, and someone who's gay doesn't always sound quote unquote gay. They sound like themselves. Like they look at, uh, what's his name? Um, George Takai or whatever from, um, from, um, Star Trek, you know, Z Sulu or whatever his name was. He is listening. His voice is very deep and very, very monotone and you know, whatever. And then you got like, um, Tim Gunn, who's like, make it work. You know, he's very kind of stereotypically gay sounding. And then you've got um, people who sound like um, Little Richard <laughs> or Little, or what's his name? Oh, the um, Richard Simmons. Yeah, Richard Simmons. So I think it's like, you know, people are incredibly stereotypical when it comes to talking about gay people and their voices or mine or whatever. Um, so I don't really think there is one, there isn't one particular gay sound. I just think that we're just like hey, straight people. I mean, I've met so many straight guys who sound gay to me and like there's, they, they're just very gay sounding when I say gay, I mean like stereotypically gay um, because it's like crazy. Uh, uh, really what's been going on on Spreaker uh, granddaddy a L K you said there's been drama around speaker been totally whack this week. Really? What's been going on? See, I'm never on. I'm, I'm not part of any of that stuff anymore. And which is fortunate for me and I'm happy not to be, but, uh, so I don't know what's going on on speaker anymore in terms of the whole social stuff, but I'd love to know. Anyway, so that's the gay voice thing. Um, I talked about straight cut, straight guys cuddling and also circumcision and the Walmart creeper. There is also um, the a Texas judge today ruled that gay marriage is that gay that the Texas ban on gay marriage is unconstitutional. Um, and so we already had that ruled before. It was ruled again unconstitutional in a different case. And so it's just a matter of time before they actually. Um, make it legal here in Texas. It's just a fucking matter of time. So I'm going to take a quick break, come back, wrap up the show. If you want to call in, the number is 214-377-0481. And I'll be right back.
right, so we're back uh, to wrap up the show. Uh, Grand, Granddaddy L. K. says in the chat room, my wife says that a gay man would sound more feminine. I say everyone sounds like themselves. There is no gay, non-gay way of talking. Voice of a person just emphasizes emphasizes the person of who they are inside. And I agree with that because as I was saying in the chat, um, <laughs> as I was saying in the chat to him that actually, uh, I, that's, she's, she's incorrect because there are plenty of straight men that sound effeminate to me. I've, I've met many, many straight men or talked to them or whatever that have very effeminate, um, very effeminate voices or talk like this or very high or, you know, whatever. Hi, I'm so, and so, you know, and so they just sound very effeminate. They're very soft spoken, very kind of high pitchy voices. And so they sound like this when they talk and it's very much like, and sometimes I've even seen guys who talk like this and they're actually men. I think they're women until I actually see them. So it's really hard sometimes to decipher between them and, you know, and so, and there's nothing wrong with sounding effeminate. If you're in, in what is a Effeminate, by the way, effeminate versus masculine is just something we have devised as a social construct to actually make people fit, make people fit into certain categories to make them fit into society's rules. And as um, and as uh, Margaret Cho's quote I mentioned earlier says about rules in society, you know, they're just uh, an agreement that you make with society to behave or be a certain way and to break those rules and just be yourself and fuck what people think. And that's how I live my life. That's how you should live your life because who the fuck cares how you sound? You are who you are and every voice is unique, just like your fingerprint. There's no one else in the world who sounds exactly like you. So to have a different kind of voice sometimes is a positive because sometimes those people end up doing great voiceover work or they do, they become well known for their, their, their voices. And, you know, think like Christopher Walken or whatever, people who have very unique voices often are, are allotted for them in some way. So people just need to fucking not worry the fuck about what people sound like. And, um, if they sound quote unquote gay or not gay or whatever, the only people who are worried about people who sound gay are insecure um, overly hyper masculine, masculine, masculinized, mach machismo, heterosexual, quote unquote, heterosexual men. And generally those kind of men who have an issue with it are in the closet anyway. That's all I want to say tonight. So I hope you, thanks for listening. Come to this, to this show tonight. I appreciate it. I want to say hi, a shout out to granddaddy Al K. Good to see you. Thanks for joining me on the show and I'll be back uh, later in the week. Good night, everybody.